friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch, Hip Cats, Groovy Chicks, and Finger Poppin' Daddies. You know, people have asked me, they say, how do you play those tenths in your left hand, that spread in your left hand? I don't, my hands are too small, I can't play that. So I have a special technique that I call the jump technique. I'm going to show you that this evening and how to use it in a tune. And, you know, people also ask me, say, why are you always wearing shades? You know, there they are off. So there you are. So here we go with tenths, how to play them and how to make your playing and your sound big. Here we go. People write to me all the time and they say, I can't play a tenth in my left hand. I see you're doing that or they're trying to read or learn my uh, arrangements or watch my videos and they see me playing a tenth. They say, I can't play a tenth. Um, my hands are too small. Well, I use a special technique to play a tenth. And um, actually, I was on a boat cruise once playing a gig, and Harold Mayberg came on from New York, and he was able to play not only a tenth, but he could play an eleventh, a twelfth, and a thirteenth. He could play that, stretch that much in his hand, have big hands. And some of you out there probably do, and you can do this easily, but that's a tenth right there. Now, if you just play tenths in the scale of C, they would sound like this. Now it's important to understand that this is a major tenth. In order to make it a minor tenth, at the lower the tenth. In other words, this is the same as a third, right? One, two, three, four uh, half steps to make a major. One, two, three to make a minor. So you have a major tenth and you have a minor tenth. Now if we go up the C scale, it's the same as going up in chords. You know, you could just go like this triad. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and then B diminished, which is also minor. So there's three major chords and four minor chords. So you're gonna, same thing, formula for the tenths. Major tenth, C major ten, D minor ten, E minor ten, F major ten, G major ten, A minor ten, B minor ten, C. Now you, you see it's a very full sound because you're playing the root and the third an octave higher instead of just like this. Now you can add notes to that. You can add a major seventh or a dominant seventh, you know, or a sixth. You can add another note or a fifth even. Here's adding the fifth. You notice I'm rolling it. So that's in a way an arpeggiated tenth. And I'm sure you can do that in this way. If you hold the pedal down, let's start with the simpler one. If you hold the pedal down and do the jump technique, I call it, I'm playing the bass note and jumping up, you know, jumping up to the tenth here, like that. And you're getting pretty much the same effect as this. Like, it's a little different, but it's getting the same effect harmonically. Like that is just as good as that. You know, let's, let's compare the difference. Do it this way. See, I missed one note there, but you see how it's uh, rhythm rhythmically even more interesting than just this. You have this one and two and three and four, or one, two, three, four, however you want to count it. Two and three and four, one, two, three. You want to start out very slowly. Now the pedal comes down, pedal down. Release pedal for the next chord. Hold it down. Release pedal. Well, that's a really good exercise. Now you can try it in a different key and get more versatile with it, like this. We'll try it from F now. Remember, you got a B flat in there now. And you're going to B flat. This one's hard, right? See, I couldn't. I can't reach that, I have to roll it. Or G, you could do G. This one's harder. This one's harder. Okay, so there you have your basic broken tenths exercise to start with. Now I'll show you a second one. So you can see that playing tenths involves really knowing your scale. 
and knowing, you know, knowing what's the next note. It's easy in C because it just goes right up the, the white notes. But when you get into more difficult keys, you're going to have to really know those scales to play tenths. Um, let, so let's just go with C now so you can at least master the key of C and then I'll show you a tune to apply it to. It'll make it really kind of fun to play. But anyway, so we have the tenth, just a simple root and, and tenth like that. So now we can add another note with the index finger and it can be the probably the first one you would try to add would be the would be the fifth like that so now try this as an exercise i'm holding the pedal down now so that so that these notes are retained in other words they all blend okay like this Now, you're going to find that this exercise is helpful in a lot of ways to, for playing piano because you're going to be using it for a variety of songs in ballads and so on. You're going to... In other words, it can be used in a variety of ways, but it's very practical for you to learn this technique. So now, the root, fifth, and tenth again. Or you can do it, you know, if you have the stretch, you can do it like this. So I can do, uh, let's see. Arpeggiating them are broken. <laughs> I buried it there. Now, okay, so now the next one might be to, uh, instead of the fifth, let's use the seventh. Or we could use the major seventh. Well, the dominant seventh is a little easier, but we'll do this dominant seventh there. Now that's a minor seventh. This is a minor seventh. Or maybe even that's a sixth, but now may, maybe a major seventh. Here's a dominant seventh. Minor seventh. Half diminished then. Then get the you know, it's fun making these videos. Sometimes I should just have someone film the process of doing it. So you'll see all the interruptions that happen. You know, the cat meows for his dinner, the phone rings, you make a mistake when you're playing, but usually even more than that, the camera dies out on you, the battery dies, and you have to recharge the battery, or all of a sudden your card, your SD card gets full, and you get a message, you know, so you, you've put on this great, you know, explanation of things, and it's totally wasted, so you have to start all over again. Anyway, that's part of the fun part of all of this, as you know. Um, I'm not complaining, I'm just telling you, giving you information. Anyway, so if we do the, the tenth, now we can add another note. And we can follow the scale tone sevenths like this. C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G dominant seven, A minor seven, B half diminished seven, C major seven. That's true for all scales now, you know, same for F you know, major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major, and so on. So, we can add the second note by clarifying, you know, in, in tense, we're not clarifying that that's a major seven. That's just a triad, really. But here, adding the major seven, which is quite a stretch, you know, you would have to jump it like, like that, hold it with the pedal, probably. So I can do that some reason I can do that for between that finger and that finger. I can't do it. <laughs> it's hard in my left, in my right hand because of bent fingers, but I can do that. I can do the major seven like that, and I'm holding it down with the pedal, so you get, you get the full sound of the chord. It's very rich. Now the minor seventh on the two chord, the D minor seven there, root seventh third, or tenth. E minor chord, root seventh third. So let's, let's say that the root the seventh, in this case it's a flat seven, and the third, in this case it's a minor third, or the tenth, is the um, most important thing to uh, play in, in terms of getting the full sound of a chord. F major seven, major seven, major third, right? Now the G is dominant, five chord is always dominant, so you can have the dominant seven there, and the major third. And the sixth chord is going to be minor seven, so you have the flatted seven or the minor seven interval there and the minor third there, and then the half diminished on the B 
has the minor seventh and the third there. You could also play the flat five like this. It's probably a little better sounding. spread of it. Now one of the things that you can do with this technique that's really fun is work it up in which you separate the bass note and the two notes or three whatever you decide to use. We just use two for now in, into uh, bass note chord or bass note you know one two three four so like one two three four one two three you can create rhythm that way see Okay, so now I'm going to try this out on the song Don't Blame Me. It's a good song to try it out in because it has a lot of two five ones or two fives and it's the key of C, so it's easy, right? You know, so first chord is C, so I'm going to go like that, you know. Now I'm just going to give it the tense and see what, what that sounds like. Let's build from just three notes, melody note, root, and tenth. So you're going to see that even that amount of, you know, that kind of voicing can sound big. Now I'm not, a, I'm not playing all tenths, I'm going, I'm alternating. Tenth, 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 root and seventh, root and tenth, root and seventh, root and tenth, root and seventh, root and tenth. So it alternates, you know, on the cycle. This is a cycle. It's like a C to F minor or B flat to E minor to A7 to D minor 7 to G7. In other words, going through a cycle of fifths. If you were just doing parallel or stepwise, you'd be doing this. Or, or chromatic, you'd be doing this. Which is kind of hard, actually. Or you'd be doing sevenths like, you know, like that. So now let's try it with three notes. So we're going to add another harmony note in here. That's nicer. You could do it up here. If you like that sound better than the lower one. Or it could be this. That's kind of hard, that one there. But let's do this one. Let's do this one. Then go to here. There. Use the tenth there. Tense. All tense now. Here's a seventh. Oh, here's a tenth. Now suppose and I play these in rhythm, it would sound like this. Do it. And so on. You see, now I can add another harmony note in the right hand. I'll keep building the sound, you know, from the smallest sound like this. The smallest would probably be this, like your basic triads with some inversions and be like that. So now we'll build them in this way now, adding another note over here. And then maybe a melodic fill. Let's add three notes. So now we're going to end up with five notes, which is the best, probably the best sound, or even six. So like, 
it's five, like it's like that. If it's six notes, then it'll be this. Or it could be this. Whatever you like. That's pretty rich. Second inning. Now it's through the bridge. going to give you one more interesting thing to do with this particular exercise and then just apply it to a blues. We're going to use a C blues and we're going to use a C7 like that. Dominant 7 flat 7 third. With approaching it from a half step below like this. It's very funky. Put in a blues scale on the top and see here we go. Definitely down here. To the G. You know, you can practice this very slowly. You start like maybe this. One of the basic rules of learning how to play piano is that you start out very slow. Whatever you're practicing, you start out with it very slow and feel the beat, feel the count. You know, before you even feel the beat and feel the count, just get the notes down in your hands. You know, you have to work at your left hand getting that coordinated, and then before you can add the right hand. And that's all part of learning how to play the piano. And I will tell you honestly, learning to play piano is the best thing you could ever do because there's no instrument quite like it. You can be a one-man band, you can play solo. It can be a marvelous experience to be able to play piano and play it for your friends or your family and so on. Get sing-alongs happening, you know, play in piano bars. <laughs> there's so many things you can do on a piano that you can do, can't do on any other instrument. So like, uh, it's more challenging in a lot of ways, but it's also so rewarding. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch, and thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on how to play tenths using the jump technique. I hope it will help you. And until next time, I'll say swing loose. And, you know, um, please stay safe, stay well, and spread kindness. That's so important during this time in our lives. And until next time, I'll say, hey, I'll see you around the block. Bye-bye. Thank you.